Hey folks, Steve Dangle here, gone for a minute, but now I'm back for another season of Cup Check. Season? I guess it's a season of Cup Check, where I do a LFR style video after every single game of the Stanley Cup Final. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is gonna be a one-taker. I don't see most of these videos being one-takers, I'm probably gonna do jump cuts like I usually do, but uh, I got my second vaccine yesterday and I'm extremely tired. But I would do it again! Ask me if I would do it again, I would do it again. So game one of the Stanley Cup Finals, the Tampa Bay Lightning win 5-1 to one over the Montreal Canadiens. Now, the best thing I can say for the Montreal Canadiens is I don't think the game was quite as dominant for Tampa Bay as the final score lets on. It really got away from them in the third, though, and that's a problem. The Tampa Bay Lightning are a problem, and... I predicted on the podcast that Tampa would end up winning this series in six games. And Habs fans are probably going to say, oh, keep doubting us, keep doubting us. First of all, that is a great position for you to be in. Uh, Everyone doubting you has led to you being four wins away from the Stanley Cup. So let's not get defensive about that. Second of all, it is not out of disrespect to the Montreal Canadiens. It is out of an abundance of respect for the reigning Stanley Cup champions in the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm not going to say anything that's untrue here. The Tampa Bay Lightning have the deepest team that Montreal has played so far in these playoffs. They've probably got the most experienced team that Montreal has played in these playoffs, given they just won the Stanley Cup, and a bunch of these guys went to the final in 2015 as well, a few Final Four appearances. They probably have the biggest and nastiest defense that Montreal has played so far in these playoffs. They've got the best goalie that Montreal has played against in these playoffs. I mean, really, what is the weakness? Seriously, what is the weakness? And you could see that Tampa Bay is built different from the other three teams that Montreal has played in these playoffs on the Eric Cernak goal. You saw Carey Price's reaction where he just sort of stands still after and he's like, okay, no one's been able to do that to us. Vegas, for as much as they need their defense to activate on offense because their forwards were useless, none of them were doing that. They weren't doing anything like what Cernak did. And Andre Palat getting crushed in the corner on the setup, but he was willing to do it, willing to sacrifice. Tampa was just, they're, they're built different. They're, they're built different than anything Montreal has faced so far. And yet, up until, I'd say, mm, second intermission, Montreal was right in this game. Cernak puts him down, one nothing. Uh, Yanni Gord got the second goal, tipping in Blake Coleman's shot. But still, the chances, roughly the same. Tampa's probably got the advantage in each category. Montreal held to just five shots in the first period. That's another thing. They haven't played a defense like Tampa Bay's. But... When Ben Sherratt scores that ping pong goal, that 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 billiards ball goal that goes off a couple uh, uh, sets of skates and in, then they turned it on. I believe after that was the two on one with Gallagher to Shea Weber on the breakaway. They had their chances, and for a while it looked like they were going to tie this game. It wasn't until early in the third, Tampa Bay gets gets a, a sort of pinball machine goal of their own off of Nikita Kucherov that I thought might have been Palat, but I think it went in off Sherratt. Off the face-off, Kucherov with a ridiculous snipe, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, no, it, it, sorry. Carey Price has not had to face that. I know in the first round it was Austin Matthews and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He has not had to play that. Nikita Kucherov now owns the record for the most points in a single playoffs by someone who did not play in the regular season. I'm amazed it took him this long to get there, but he passed Peter Forsberg, who I think uh, had the previous record of 27 points. Kucherov, two goals in this game, and then the one thing you can maybe hang your hat on at the end of the game, you know what? Our penalty kill still amazing. Our penalty kill still hasn't allowed a goal since the first round of the playoffs with less than two minutes to play. Boom. Steven Stamkos from the Steven Stamkos spot. From further beyond the Steven Stamkos spot. That wasn't even a good angle. And he still manages to squeak it through Carey Price. The Habs left bloodied afterwards. Brendan Gallagher with that extremely gruesome, uh, dangerous looking uh, fall to the ice. I was amazed to see him. Uh, a, get up from it, and B, still be on the bench. I was glad to see him still in it. There was some nasty stuff. Shea Weber obviously getting the fine. We'll talk about that in a minute. But it seemed to me that Tampa Bay 
took advantage of home ice advantage. They really made the uh, Caulfield, Suzuki, and Toffoli line work defensively. It made it impossible for Montreal to generate offense. They still did manage to generate a few chances. I thought Ben Chirot was good in that role, um, sort of jumping up and everything. But in two of the three periods, Montreal was held to five shots. They were held to five shots in a third period they were losing. Tampa Bay clamping them up. They have not had to deal with this. If there's one thing I'd take from this game as a positive for Montreal, they were still getting some rush opportunities, even if it didn't uh, equal a shot on goal. Carey Price was absolutely spectacular. And if you want to be encouraged, go look at the one goal that Montreal scored. Go look at how easily... Josh Anderson, who was a factor in this game, just shoves Mikhail Sergachev from the front of the net. That has to be, especially if Joel Armia uh, comes back in game two, that has to be the game plan. Crash the net, move some bodies. Tampa is not the easiest team to move by any chance, but you can move bodies. You can get a weird goal that was going to go wide and went off a couple pairs of skates. There were encouraging things here for Montreal, but... Tampa Bay, that's about as good a Game 1 victory as you can expect. They're going to want to win both games in Tampa. For obvious reasons, it's better to win games than to lose one. But Game 3, Montreal, home ice advantage, Dominic Ducharme coming back, all the fans in the building. Tampa needs to win Game 2. If you allow Montreal to temporarily steal home ice advantage, oh buddy. I think you're in a world of trouble. Have you not been watching these playoffs? You must have been watching these playoffs. Now, the one thing I'll say about Shea Weber and the fine, if you watch my live stream on the Sportsnet YouTube channel, I called it in the moment. The second they showed the replay, I'm like, that's a fine. Here is why fines are performative nonsense and they're useless for uh, NHL player safety. Now, I look at that slash from Shea Weber on Nikita Kucherov, I don't think it's suspension worthy, but it was nasty. That's why it got the fine, right? In a in a in a vacuum, it makes sense that it was a five thousand dollar fine. But what is the point of a fine, a five thousand dollar useless fine, if you're just going to keep handing them out? Because Shea Weber was fined earlier in these playoffs for a cross check on Wayne Simmons. Yes, a cross check and a slash are not the same, but. He takes a piece out of the playoffs leading scorer in Nikita Kucherov and all it cost him was $5,000. How many players are not taking that trade? They're absolutely taking that trade. Fines are not a deterrent in the National Hockey League and that is a huge problem for the NHL going forward. I'm not here suggesting Shea Weber should be suspended for a Stanley Cup final game for that slash that we, we see a thousand times in any given game, but... Should the fines not increase or something? Once again, that's on the NHL Players Association. That's their fault. Uh, they got to... What are they going to do? Are they going to negotiate it into the next collective bargaining agreement? That, hey, we want to be fined more? They're, they're protecting paychecks and not players. And I think that's an enormous issue. But let's not let that distract from the game. Montreal, I think, has got to take it to the Tampa Bay Lightning physically in game two easier said than done uh, i believe the hits were even after two periods or uh, within five hits of each other montreal is not as in trouble as the 5-1 uh final suggests but uh that's tough that's a, that's a real tough first game so i'm gonna wrap this here i'm hoping the rest of the cup check videos are are gonna be longer and have a little bit more energy, but I want to do another video on this channel today as well. I'm so happy with myself that I got through this one. Uh, tomorrow, Sportsnet's YouTube channel, watch the Stanley Cup final with Steve Dangle. Check it out. It's going to start, mm, I think, roughly five after eight. Roughly five after eight. We don't want a ton of filler there. So, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. It's a zillion coffee day, and I mean that literally.